Yes, any news of this one, Zinvia? Smuggler camps? Dark moons? No, of course not. Ishu has only lived a good, honest life. Please, you must find this one's Jakajit. May bright moons watch over you. Oh, really? <laughs> well, Ishu supposes his family has grown over the years. But how could this one not seek their companionship? They're... But of course, mostly. Uh, she and Medwick don't always get along, but Medwick is older and doesn't always like to play or be teased. I warned you, Thunderbrutes. And so the other thorn in my paw arrives. I told you, did I not? First time was a warning. Now it is a threat. You both leave town. No more that again? I told you Ishu's daughter left Riverhold years ago. He's just a delusional old Khajiit caught up in a fantasy. Who I am does not matter. What I can do to you, on the other hand, should be of immediate concern. You... <sighs> so it appears that your strange friend is Rides are the rogue. Good to know. Let us just say that her reputation precedes her. We are investigators, are we not? <laughs> you must search for a trail. With any luck, she'll lead you straight to Ishu's daughter. Meanwhile... From the sugar cloth. You must follow her trail while this one has the guards. I'm hearing crush and scar, undead mainly. But the name of Midas. Ah, yes, the stories of an undead plague.
Meddling! Let is the role. Caught at last. Did you find my daughter? Where is she? Here. Your daughter is right here, you old fool. Rigeza! You're the one who stole Cynthia? Oh, this one's poor Jakashit. Feeling a little jealous to go so far as to steal your father. Well, it seems that our investigation has come to a successful close. In hindsight, it makes sense. When you were told that Ishu's daughter left town years ago, Rideza must have been speaking of herself. Still, to have been chasing Ishu's pet this whole time. This is true. Because of our dedication, Riverhold no longer has to deal with these vile smugglers. Drinks are on me. Ishu is so pleased that you were able to find Zinthia. What do you mean? Ishu gave you every detail about his precious Zinthia that he could think of. Rideza has become just as greedy and cruel as her mother. How? If she wants to make peace, Ishu will make peace. After. Family reunited, a smuggling ring destroyed, and the gratitude of all of Riverhold. <laughs> Not a bad start to a partnership, yes? Miss, of course, of course. Your share as promised. After all, Music would never have been able to solve this investigation without your aid. Pleasure working with you, Walker. A safe town, a happy client, and an investigation expertly solved. Uh, after such a successful investigation, Mizik is hopeful that more clients will come forth. We live in turbulent times, Walker. Drag Those in power have priorities. And the petty problems of the common folk? They tend to be on the very bottom of this list. Of course. But first and foremost, it is Mizik's passion. Mizik's investigations take him many places, so... It is hard to call one town home, but he's enjoyed his time in the Riverhold. He, uh, honestly? Uh, just the one. <laughs> uh, a bard's flute was stolen while he was drinking in the tavern. Quickly. It turned out to be the innkeeper who stole the flute. by the moons dazzling wax Anorak's work had never done 
Don't call us mounts. Nobody. There must be. I expected sorrow and despair, but the situation here goes beyond even my prophetic inklings. On the surface, yes. But peace through tyranny provides false harmony. Euraxia uses fear and threats of violence to keep the Khajiit in line, making them... It would be better if I showed you. Follow me and I'll demonstrate the true depths of my half-sister's villainy. Very well. Have you ever visited a Rimen workhouse? They treat the Khajiiti workers worse than slaves. It's that building over there. For most of Rimen's Khajiit, it's the only job available to them. The workhouse serves to snare the poor and the destitute, those who fall behind on their debts. They... One of the first things Euraxia did after declaring herself queen was to institute tariffs and fines that apply only to Khajiiti citizens. The Rimen Khajiit? No. Any complaints incur fines for causing a public disturbance or some other inane ordinance. No one wants to risk falling even further into debt. Oh, Euraxia is clever. She pays the Khajiiti, and the workhouse isn't technically a prison. On the surface, it appears to be a place that helps society's unfortunates, but underneath, it's slavery without any of the uncomfortable trappings. Now... Let's visit the Rimen marketplace. Take a look around. Business seems to be thriving, but appearances can be deceived. The life of a nomad promises. It may be hard to see, but the Khajiiti merchants struggle to keep their stalls open while the less bestial business people rake in the profits. Unfairly doesn't begin to cover it. Khajiiti merchants must deal with high tariffs, extra inspection fees, costly licenses. Euraxia's squeezing them for every piece of gold imaginable. She even instituted a fur tax. On the surface, it seems reasonable to make Khajiiti pay for extra inspections to ensure their fur isn't getting into the products they sell. Come along. I want to show you the improvements Euraxia made to the palace wall. See the trebuchets. Notice how they're aimed into the city below. See how the siege weapons sit upon the walls. How else do you think Euraxia maintains order and keeps the elsewhere defense force at bay? She declared publicly and has repeated often that any attempt to liberate Rimen will see her unleash the full fury of the siege weapons upon the city. 
If Euraxia can't have Rimmon, then neither can anyone else. She'd destroy the city in a heartbeat. Absolutely not. But the lie makes her supporters feel better. The Khajiit know that even a peaceful protest could result in the destruction of Rimmon. So far, no one has dared to challenge Euraxia's will in this matter, and for good reason. When we get to the palace, let me do the talking. As the Elder Tharn, I'll demonstrate my dominance over Euraxia and negotiate a cessation of hostilities. Queen Euraxia's guests now. I don't like the looks of these meddlers. I say we feed them to the dragons and be done with it. So you're Abner Tharn's bodyguard and valet. Not what I expected. I assume you want to follow your master into the Queen's inner sanctum, huh? I'll allow it. But first, I want to gauge the measure of your marrow. I am Queen Euraxia's chief necromancer. You may call me Zumog Foom. The other grave callers answer to me. And this is my familiar and confidant, Sir Cadwell the Betrayer. Ah, yes. The Betrayer saw you when it looked through the Soul Shriven's eyes. The creature you know is a pale shadow of the dark knight that once walked these lands. My actions don't concern you. I just wanted to meet Abner Tharn's lackey and determine if Queen Euraxia had anything to fear. Now about the rest of my body, oh pestilent one. Your insults won't hasten the process of betrayal. Presenting Abner Thorn, Grand Chancellor and Overlord of Nibine, Imperial Battle Mage of the Elder Council, and Patriarch of the Tharn Dynasty, and his bodyguard. Ah, half-brother, your arrival, it's so unexceptional. Pretending to be a queen... Hush, Abner, you bore me. Bodyguard, you look interesting. Come talk to me. You have... My sources indicated that my half-brother's associate was somewhat... taller. Oh, well. Now, why in the world should I even consider negotiating with members of the losing side? A warning? How thoughtful. You do know that I defeated the Khajiiti army and took control of the Rimen throne? I am no one's puppet, I assure you. But sweet talk? From an associate of my half-brother? <laughs> I'm flattered. Shall we retire to the dungeons? We'll engage in the most interesting activities, you and I. You Do not attempt to sway me with your silver tongue. Mulomnir and I have a special relationship. An understanding. The dragons will secure my hold over elsewhere, and there's nothing you or my pathetic half-brother can do to stop them. Enough! Zumog what do you do? Move against Riverhold on your word. Then the word is given. Now, half brother. Treachery? How could I ever have anticipated this? Guards, take them to the dungeons. I think not. I suppose that could have gone better. I prepared for Euraxia's probable betrayal. Unfortunately, my teleport spell wasn't quite able to penetrate the palace wards. We heard two things of note. 
First, Euraxian forces have invaded the Desert Wind Adeptorium for some insidious purpose. And second, my vile half-sister ordered an attack on Riverhold. One thing at a time, my companion, one thing at a time. I need to recover my strength after teleporting us into this skeever hole. My age is finally catching up with me. Thank you so much for poking that open wound. Eventually. Quicker if you stop badgering me about it. All sorts of vermin wander the sewers, including... Well, that's an experience I won't be adding to my memoirs. Now, now. Things actually turned out better than I expected. We know that Euraxia wants something from the Desert Wind Adeptorium, and we know she's about to launch a counter-strike against Riverhold. That's not exactly true. If my power wasn't depleted... Well, let's not digress. I'll go to Riverhold and warn Garish Re. We'll make Adeptorium serve the same function as monasteries in other parts of Tamriel. Desert Wind and its adepts follow the order of Jean Kaj. It's west of here, on the northern lip of the Scar.
what? Go down! 